Proton is an absolutely amazing tool that has made it dead simple to run tons of Windows games under Linux. Sometimes it requires some configuration, sometimes that's minimal, sometimes it's a bit more than that, but it's not perfect and sometimes it just doesn't work at all. Now I could use Wine directly and tools like Lutris have made that much easier to do, but today we're focusing on Proton. Now because Proton isn't perfect, this has led to a really popular fork known as Proton GE. And for some games, running Proton GE is absolutely essential. But Proton GE is not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about instead is Proton Up. Proton Up is a tool to basically manage your Proton GE versions so you don't have to keep going back to the GitHub and dealing with it like that. You can just run this tool and go and download any of the versions that you want. So the normal installation for Proton GE basically involves coming to the GitHub. If you're a crazy person, I guess you could compile it, but you really don't need to. Going to the releases section, finding which version you actually want. So let's say we want, I don't know, uh, 6.13-GE-1. Going and downloading that from down here. Going and unpacking it. Putting it in the location that you need for your Steam directory. If you're using the Flatpak version, the directory is going to be weird. I don't actually know what it is. But if you're using the regular version, it's going to be in your .steam directory in root in compatibility tools.d. Proton Up, on the other hand, makes this process very, very simple. So if we want to get the latest version of Proton GE, all we need to do is go and run Proton Up. It's going to go and try to work out what that latest version is. It's going to say, hey, do you want to download 6.16-GE-1? Tell us the size, when it was published. I'm going to say yes. It's going to go and download that for us. It's going to take a couple of minutes. And then once that is downloaded, it's going to go and unpack it for us and then put it where it needs to go. Once it finished downloading it, it went and installed it where it needs to be. And then after I restarted Steam, going into my properties, into the compatibility tools, as we can see, now we have that version that I just installed and we can go and use it just fine. One really nice thing that Proton Up does do is when you first go and install a version of Proton GE, you're not actually going to have that compatibility tools directory. Running Proton Up, doesn't matter which command you're using, any of the commands that go and actually install the version of Proton GE are going to make that directory if it doesn't exist. No need for any manual user intervention, it's just going to handle it for you. Now, if your Steam directory is in a different location, let's say you're storing all your Steam stuff on a separate drive, so you move it out of your normal home directory or let's say you're using the flatpak version where it's going to be in the weird flatpak location dot var slash something or other in that case proton up is not going to install it in the correct location but luckily there is an option to actually go and deal with that so what we do is we pass in the dash d option then we can actually go and pass in a path let's say we pass in my videos directory and have it just installed in there. Now, it doesn't actually require you running it every single time. Instead of doing that, it actually goes and sets the path. So every time I go and run Proton Up from now on, it's going to try and install it in that directory. So I'll cut ahead to when that's downloaded and show you it located there. As we can see here, it's sent it to the videos directory. Obviously, you never actually want to do this, but if for whatever reason you do need to actually change the directory, like with that flat pack or any other sort of packaging solution in the future, that does let you actually go and fix that problem, and ProtonOp doesn't need to go and address every single way that it can be packaged. Or you might have like a distro that does something weirdly like that. This lets you fix that problem. Now you also don't have to install it. If you just want to go and download it and then deal with the table later, that can be done by running ProtonOp dash dash download. It's going to prompt us to go and download the latest version, and I believe by default, it's going to stick it into the downloads directory, which can be configured by using the ProtonUp dash O option. I don't know when I would really go and just download it and not actually install it. Maybe there's some use case for this, but I don't know what it is. Sorry, I was wrong. It actually downloads it to your home directory, but it still just downloads the tarball and doesn't go and unpack it. Now, sometimes you don't actually want the latest version. That's what we've been working with right now. Running the ProtonUp command by itself is always going to download the latest. So if you want to go and like deal with some issue, let's say the latest version has a bug with whatever game you're trying to play, go and run the ProtonUp dash dash releases option, and that is going to go and list out every single release available. There is a lot of them, 
Uh, so there's certainly plenty to test. Now, if you want to go and download one of these versions, let's say you want to go and download uh, 6.10-GE-1. The way we do this is by running proton up dash t and then passing in that tag. So in this case, 6.10-GE-1. Give that a second. It's going to prompt us to download it. And then it's going to go and do the process all over again. In this case, because we didn't use the download option, it is going to go and install it for us. So we can go and use that straight away. By restarting Steam, we are now provided with that option inside of the compatibility tools, as you can see right here. Usually, if you're going with a specific version and it's not for user testing, it'll be because you read a Reddit post or something on ProtonDB saying this version of Proton should work with the game you're trying to play. But either way, it is a really useful option to have. Generally, I'm just going to run the latest version though unless I've run into one of those situations. Now, over time, you're going to go and collect more and more versions of Proton G, and at some point, if you're no longer using those older versions, it probably makes sense to go and clear them out. So if we go and run Proton Up dash L, that is going to go and list out every version we have installed. Now, the first time you run this, like after booting your system or after your RAM is cleared, it is going to take a while to actually run. I think that's because it's trying to verify that the folders in there actually are versions of Proton GE. So in this case, I only have three versions. I have 16, 10, and 12. Let's just say I no longer use version 10 anymore. So the way we go and delete this is by doing Proton up dash R and then taking this section. We don't need to include the Proton section. All of them are versions of Proton. That is basically assumed. So let's go and take this right here. And like we did with the tag section, just go and include that name. It's going to go and prompt us for deletion. I'm going to say yes. And now it's deleted. Now the directory it uses to go and search which versions of Proton G you actually have installed is the same directory you've gone and set with the dash D option. So if I still had it set to my videos folder, it would just show... What was it, 6.10 we installed before? But because it's set to the correct location, it shows all of my normal versions. And anything where there is a confirmation prompt, let's say instead of deleting this one, we want to go and actually reinstall it again. So changing this back to the dash T option, anything like this, if we include the dash Y option, that is going to automatically confirm it and skip past that process. So if you want to do this inside of a script or something like that, that actually can be kind of helpful. Now, this isn't made clear by the option, but when you do include the dash Y, it is going to go and run it without any output. So just keep that in mind that if it looks like it's doing nothing, it actually is doing something in the background. It's just not telling you. Obviously, Proton GE isn't needed for every single game. Some games run perfectly fine without it. Other games are like, say, Ender Lilies, where the cutscenes won't play. Other things are like Spyro, where the cutscenes won't play. But if you do use Proton GE, they play, but they have a language randomizer. So sometimes it's Polish, sometimes it's English, sometimes it's Japanese. It's just a luck of the draw. And other games are like Yis8, where if I try to run it with a main version of Proton, my controller doesn't work. So some games it's needed. Other things like, say, Hades run perfectly fine on Proton Experimental. But if you are using Proton G and you like to do a lot of stuff from your terminal, honestly, there's no reason not to use this. It is a far, far more convenient way to go and download new versions. If I wasn't using Proton Up, I probably would have written my own script to go and download stuff and unpackage it anyway. So this just saves me the effort. So let me know, is ProtonOps something you'd actually consider using, or is it just a big waste of time? Now, I know someone's going to say, oh, but gaming is a big waste of time anyway. Yeah, I get, I, I get that, mate. But, like, the people who actually are gamers, do you think Up actually makes sense? So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here and things, Patreon, subscribe, sell you pay the link down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and it's absolute chaos and our five or so YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.